Hi, I'm Jo Crane. I'm one of the consultants in community paediatrics in Portsmouth. Um, this is my next video. Um, I'll see how they all go. And what I want to talk about for the next five videos are five hormones or neurochemicals that run your brain. So I always use this hand model to kind of demonstrate these things, okay? So here's my brain again. Here's my hand model. First thing I want to talk about are two hormones, or two, and I talk about hormones and neurochemicals, and apologies if I swap in between, okay? But um, one, your biggest one that is for your fight and flight is your cortisol, and it's also kind of super powered by noradrenaline. So if we think of an example of, um, if you're crossing the road, so you're crossing the road, this is for yourself, and uh, you look both ways and then you look again and then a car is heading towards you. What happens is your eyes will see that car and it will send a message to your downstairs brain to say you're about to die, which is right because you're about to get hit by a car. Your downstairs brain will then send a message direct down to your adrenal glands, get you to secrete cortisol and noradrenaline and it basically fills you your head to toe and you will move it make your muscles move out of the way or try to pull you back you might still get hit but you will try to and you will feel your heart pounding your palms sweaty your mouth dry and all that is due to those hormones now this is what we call our fight or flight obviously when a car's coming towards you you're trying to fly rather than try and fight the thing that this happens though is that when you've got this caught on when you've got this adrenaline going what it actively does is it switches off that front bit of your brain, your, your frontal lobe. And the reason being is because what it, what it doesn't, your brain doesn't want you to go, oh, I must be logical and see if I can negotiate with a car for it to stop. Because you can't do that. The car's not going to stop. So it wants to switch off that rational part of your brain to put you into fight or flight mode. So this is what happens when something stressful or adversity happens to us. But this is actually what happens with all adversity or all stresses. So with the developing brain, when you're little, when you're born, your downstairs brain is pretty much king, okay? So I'm hungry, I'm tired, I've got a dirty nappy, I, um, I'm just bored. Every single thing is like, this is awful, I am going to die, I shall scream, okay? And babies flip their lids all the time and that's why they're crying because they get this cortisol. Now, as a parent, we also have our brains here. And we also have our lids, which flip quite easily. And we've all got our downstairs brains as well, yeah? So you've got your baby that's crying, and you will be able to tolerate it, tolerate it, tolerate it for an extent, but at some point, your lid will flip. And actually, what we're needing to do is try and keep our lids down, because our lids down is key to getting our kids' lids down, which is why about staying calm is so key to teaching our children to regulate their emotions and get their lids down. The more you can teach them to get their lids down, you grow pathways in the brain. So during the first five, six years, every single part of the brain is growing. It's all growing in pathways from about five, six, seven years on through till about 12, 13. The stronger ones get stronger, the weaker ones get weaker, but it's all still growing. And through from 12 up to about 24, 25, some people say 28, the ones you don't use get pruned off and the other ones get stronger, but it's still growing. So if you are watching this video and you are under the age of 25, your brain is still physically growing and you can amend how that is and how it grows depends on how you are responded to. So that's me going on about cortisol, and I'm gonna stop now, and then my next video will be about oxytocin, which is another hormone which helps us get our lids down. Thank you for listening.